Hi everybody, Luke Gallant from the uh, YT624 EJ Maintenance Channel. Uh, by episode 19, I think you probably know who I am and why I'm doing this, but for engineers, consistency is key. Um, this is going to be the last episode of the season, and by filming this episode, I'm officially declaring that it's the end of winter. It's March 27th, we're six days past the first day of spring already, so uh, consider this the end. Um, I'm going to target something today that... Uh, I mentioned in one of my last videos it's the fact that this chute does not go down as far as it should now a pretty minor issue however i wanted to take the opportunity to try out a new parts website that i uh, referred to before which is impex based in japan so i thought for the first time ever i would order some parts from this site uh, impex now these parts come straight from japan the uh you can Google it yourself. It's called Impex Japan, I-M-P-E-X. And these are genuine Yamaha parts. And I'll be honest, they come at a fraction of the cost of local dealerships. Now, we want to support our dealerships as much as we can, but sometimes, you know, I mean, it's money in our pocket as well, right? Um, so I'm going to try replacing this cable that controls the chute. I'm going to show in the manual where the instructions are on the routing of the cable, etc. And then I'll show the disassembly of the cable very quick. I'm gonna measure the cable to do a comparison. I might have just wasted my money here, we'll find out quite shortly. But aside from the linkage up here, which hasn't changed, and the lever at the other end, I don't see where else I would have lost the length uh, in this cable. And I also compared to another unit that I know um, from a friend, and something's up with mine. So I hope it's the cable that's maybe stretched internally. So what I'll do is I'll take it apart, do a measurement comparison, and maybe I can cut the other one open. All right, guys, per normal, we're gonna take an unnecessary look at the service manual here. We've got here number five, the chute cable, and we see it's routing. Comes down from the lever, and then gets strapped to this mid uh, member, crosses over to the left side of the blower, and then runs straight to the chute. Then here on this page, we see step G tells us to fasten the chute cable to the handlebar, and we see again the chute cable is shown here. We're gonna follow these unnecessary instructions to get this cable routed. All right, guys, I've taken the tension out of this chute cable, so the cable's loose now, so the chute's pointing up in the air. I'm gonna undo this nut, and then we'll get to the other one. Then we're gonna take this cotter pin out, All right, guys, so I'm a little bit perturbed here, uh, even though I missed filming the last part there. I got the cable out, and I'm comparing the old to the new, so the old has that piece of tape. So I've kind of lined them up there, and if I compare the old to the new, uh, the old is a fair bit longer, as you can see at the end there. So I, I'm not sure what's going to happen here, but what I've done is I've actually measured how much cable sticks out from both adjusting nuts, so I've kind of took the slack cable at each end, made them the same, and I compared how much was at the other end, and they come out to very close, within one millimeter. So the total cable that protrudes is about seven inches plus 13 millimeters, whatever, whatever that converts to. So I'll try to get this installed, but I'm not optimistic, unfortunately, but let's see. All right, guys, so I'm a little bit annoyed uh, for two reasons. One is the cable that they sent me for some reason is shorter and i just put it in i think it could still maybe work but i don't know if something's wrong with it or what the deal is but i don't like it uh the second thing is there was something i had observed before i ordered the cable but i just dismissed it and now i'm looking at it again and i think that is the cause of the shoot not going down enough so if you look at this support which supports the cable i believe it's supposed to be angled out here and that'll give extra distance so I'll show you guys, you can see where the, the paint is kind of cracked there. And that's where, you know, the metal has bent. All right, guys, here we're gonna zoom in. All right, guys, I think you can kind of see here, that the paint is chipped and this support bent here. So what I'm gonna do now is, is maybe, I'll try it with my hands and we'll see if we can straighten this out. And I think that that should really help this cable. All right, so I've bent it back, and I think that's the right shape now. I looked at previous videos, previous pictures. Let's get the cable installed and see how the chute performs. So I've tied the cable at both ends. I've straightened that bracket. Let's check out the chute. All right, 
So we see that the chute has a full movement down. Um, however, I can see the bracket is deflecting quite a bit. So I think that over time that bracket will get more and more stressed and is likely to repeat the same behavior it's seen. So I'm gonna come up with a fix for it. So one of the things I wanna make clear is that the cable that I ordered from Impex is a genuine Yamaha part. It does fit, although it doesn't have as much slack as the one that came on the machine originally. So I think Yamaha might have revised that part number for that shoot control cable to be a little bit shorter. So I did do the route, it does make it, it is adequate, <clears throat> but it doesn't have the amount of slack I would like. So try to hold on to those original shoot control cables if you can. So in fitting uh, a reinforcement bracket, I come up with this shape. So it's gonna have a 90 at the bottom. It's gonna have a hole for the, uh, for the adjustment um, rod and nut. And then up top, it's gonna have a bend like so. I'm gonna show you guys what the, uh, the cardboard uh, mock-up looks like. So I'm gonna work now to uh, cut a piece of aluminum uh, bar. So one of the measures that I took here off a reference blower to take a little angle gauge like this, which is in the category excessiveness here, put it against the front up here and then put it against the bottom of this bracket. And so the way I straighten mine back out is to use a reference and that angle from here to the bottom is 109 and a half degrees. Don't forget that half degrees. Um, and by doing that, you can make sure that this thing is at the angle it needs to be. Then you can go ahead and make your bracket to go underneath and brace it. All right, so after uh, too much time trying to fabricate this thing, I've got this aluminum bracket. You can see here the construction of it, nothing too crazy. I did this with a piece of cardboard first. So what this does is goes here and braces up against the top here. So I've, I've got the bottom kind of drilled out and uh, slotted out so it can fit here. And then up top, I'm gonna drill and uh, tap and or put a nut on the other side of this and then I'll have the bracing I need. All right, so I've got the bracket installed now loosely and uh, I wanna drill this hole. I'm gonna use a uh, M6 by one tap and see if that works in this fine plate. If not, I'll put a nut on the back of the plate. All right. So we've got extra help in here tonight. We're gonna to each do our thing here. Now I think most people know that paint doesn't stick to aluminum. I reminded myself of this. In any case, let's give it the Super 88 treatment. It's probably more expensive than paint, but to paint aluminum, we would need a uh, self-etching primer and it's quite expensive and I'm not gonna go and uh, buy that. So we're just gonna do this the old fashioned way. Just coat it with vinyl. Oh yeah, well clean the web off, okay? All right, the Super 88 treatment's been given. It's uh, much cheaper than a $30 can of primer, another $10 can of spray paint. And if I don't like how it looks in a couple of years, I'll take it apart and spend the 40 bucks on top of that uh, $80 cable with shipping that I didn't really need. So let's go ahead and reinstall this. All right, I'm gonna try and wrap this up. So we're gonna take our Super 88 coated piece here, stick it in. So what we're gonna do now is put the cable through. Then once we have that on there like that, we're gonna put, we're then gonna put the piece over top. So we're gonna slide the cable through the piece. I don't take a socket cap screw with some Loctite on. 
I'm working on the snow blower. Um, because somebody didn't brace this uh, cable support to withstand the forces of the spring pressure of the chute replacing against it. It's all clean. Oh, it's clean now? Yeah. That's good. This, that's, that's where boots go? Yeah. Thank you for cleaning that. So once the piece is installed with the two nuts down here, we can then turn the Allen with our Loctite and secure that into the tap hole. And I'm gonna go ahead and apply a decent amount of torque there to make sure that the threads can withstand that. And there we go. Then finally, I'm gonna take the cable end and, and push it back on. So we're now gonna put the clip on the end. I've put the cable back up. So now we're gonna test our chute to bring the rubber flap down over top the threaded bit so that water doesn't get into that cable. We can try to extend the chute from this or to point the chute down from that angle and make sure that that stays. All right, guys, while we're here, we're gonna do a little bonus feature. We're gonna remove these two pins, inspect them, clean them, grease them, put them back. So I'm gonna start by getting these two cotter pins out I'm going to leave the spring in because the spring might actually hold some of the chute together, but the whole thing might also flop apart. Let's see how it goes. I got these two cotter pins out. Then I think I'm going to have to hammer the pins out based on the fact that they don't seem too uh, willing to move. So let's get that done and then uh, recap. And So here we have the first pin. It's actually got some grease on it still. So we're gonna give it a good wipe. This pin uh, appears to have a bend in it. And uh, somebody else posted online about that and I think they bought a new one. But for me, there's no corrosion on this and this bend definitely didn't happen just from being in there. It must be part of the design. So uh, just to give it some tension or something. So I'm gonna put some of our favorite uh, Yama Lube low temp grease and stick the pin back in the hole. All right, so we've got that first pin out and greased and back in. Let's go on to number two. All right, so number two pin is out. It has no corrosion, a little minor amount of dirt. So we're gonna give it a clean. Now the pins are not straight. Uh, the pins have a bit of a bend in them. I think you can probably see that. Uh, that is not a defect. I think that's to keep tension in the uh, mechanism. So we're gonna put some grease on there and stick it back in. While you're pushing the pin in, leave the screwdriver in so that it guides it back. So what we want to do at the end is clean up the grease. So at the end here, wipe up that grease, wipe up the grease. Then we can go ahead and put those cotter pins back. Now the Yamaha book says to use new cotter pins. So we'll do an in-between. We'll use new ones, but they won't be from Japan. So there we have it. I guess just, so just for reference as well, I do want to show you this little trick. You can take the spring off of this. And then what we're going to see is the fact that the that the chute moves very readily. So if you have any binding, you wouldn't have this. So that's a good thing to check. All right, everybody. So thanks for watching this video. I guess to recap, if your chute doesn't go all the way down, you probably don't need a new cable. If you do buy a new cable, it might be shorter than the one that you had on the machine originally, which isn't the end of the world, but it'll be a bit tighter of a fit. Um, what I found on my machine is that the chute wouldn't go all the way down because this bracket was flexing towards the inside and the effective cable distance would shorten when that occurred. So what I did is I just bent up a, a fairly simple aluminum bracket to place on the inside so there's no more deflection of that, of that original piece. And uh, instead of buying aluminum primer, which I didn't want to, 
I just taped it with vinyl uh, Super 88 tape. So we're gonna give the shoot a try now and see how it goes. So the shoot is now at the rearmost position. So I'll start pushing it forward and I start getting shoot movement basically right away. And then if I push the shoot all the way forward, I get that downward angle that'll allow me to shoot the snow on my kids. Right? Yeah. Yeah? Is that what you need? Okay. All right. Well, thanks again for watching, everybody. That'll be the end of the 2023 season for me. Like I said, next year, we might open it up with a carburetor cleaning video. And uh, yeah, if you have any suggestions, send them my way. And hope you have a good summer. And you definitely won't be hearing from me on these snowblowers until winter. Have a good one. Bye.